The story is said about the Harness Stipler Rebbe, Ramat Chadayv Tversky. I think he was the son in law of the Divrei Chaim, and when he went to a Rebbe, it was often the Chartk of a Rebbe, one of the Rizhina Rebbes. And he was always very inspired by the Hadlokas Neris in Chartkov. He was a young man, very tall and lanky, and he was barely in his 20s when he got married. And he married a very short woman. He, being very serious, went one year to his Rebbe's Hanukkah Hadlokah, and his Rebbe called him over, and he asked him, he said, Matchadoiv, Matchadoiv, when you speak to your wife, do you bend down to her or does she jump up on a chair to speak to you? And Matchadoiv, the harness stipler, was very, was completely befuddled. This was not a type of humor that he was used to, and his Rebbe was serious, and he was serious. And then the Rebbe looked at him and he says, Mistami, you do what the Gemara does. The Gemara says in Bab Metziah, Ishtacha Gutsa, Gochen Valachishla. If your wife is short, bend down and whisper to her. So you probably bend down. And again, he was not clear what his Rebbe wanted, but when he got home and he recognized that he lights the Hanukkah candles above three Tvachim, but beneath ten Tvachim, and he realized that he had to bend down, he understood the secret that his Rebbe was trying to impart to him. The Hanukkah is the form of Ishtacha Gutsa Gochen Valachishla. If your wife is short, bend down and whisper to her, meaning that there is something akin to a medrash. A lot of the Sfarim bring it down. I haven't seen it in any authoritative medrash yet, but everything is going to be Batala Asid Lava, except for Hanukkah and Purim. Seif HaTedah brings it down, others bring it down. Now, that means that Pesach, Sukkis, Shvuis, all going to be obsolete replaced with new holidays, but Hanukkah and Purim will remain. The explanation is that those were mile markers of our instatement as a nation, Pesach, our Kabbalah Satera, Shvuis, Anani HaKavit, Sukkis, and there'll be new Yom Tivs, there'll be new holidays that will eclipse those. The Geula Asida is going to have tremendous celebration. And it's sensible that when a kid is young, you celebrate a Bar Mitzvah. As he gets older, you celebrate a wedding. Then you celebrate births of his children. And that's how it's going to work also with us as a nation. But those are celebrations that Hashem created. In terms of celebrations that we created, the rabbinic celebrations, which is, Pes- which is Purim and Hanukkah, those will never be bottled. And therefore, those are sort of an invitation where we invite the Rabbani Shalom to us, not where the Rabbani Shalom is inviting us to him. We're inviting him into our house. And that's the concept of Ishtacha Gutsa. If your wife is short, meaning us, we're short in comparison to the Rabbani Shalom. Gochen Velochishla, the Rabbani Shalom will bend down to us and come and he'll join us. And that's the secret of why the Hanukkah candles have to be lit above three but beneath ten to sort of symbolize the idea that it's the Rabbani Shalom coming to our house. We're inviting him to our house. And that's something that never gets taken away. Where he comes to us, that's not for him to rescind. What he did for us and the Yom Tevim that he established, those are rescindable. But when he comes to us, that doesn't get rescinded. And therefore, it's very important to understand that we're enjoying a visit from the Shechina Kaviyochel in our houses, the whole Hanukkah, to make sure the houses are clean and to make sure the houses are full of joy and to make sure that this, the Simchas Hanukkah, like the Simchas Purim, when the Rabbi Shalom comes to visit us. And these um, Yom Tevim are never bottled. I'm wishing everybody a wonderful Hanukkah. Thank you very much. Thank you.